I am so glad you convinced me that the family car should be the Defender 110. It is so beautiful inside. It's so comfortable. And it just feels indestructible. Yes, it really is. I've been waiting a long time for the new model to come out. The Defender 110, I'm telling you, it's my favorite car of all times. It's my third one. You know, I have stories of going off road. The guy managed the group. He was like, what are you doing in this beautiful car? I'm like, I'm going off road. He's like, are you sure? Because you can use one of ours. And then they look like Mad Max cars. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to do this. And he was shocked. Wow. Well, it's great because the Defender has been reimagined for 21st century adventure and its unparalleled off-road ability as well as its robust interior are invaluable whether you're headed towards uncharted territory or just a weekend of exploration. The Defender 110 tackles challenging surroundings with absolute confidence. The SUV conveys strength outside and in, featuring peerless technology like an intuitive driver display and an award-winning infotainment system. That's my favorite part, to keep you connected no matter where the journey takes you. Adventure is unique to everyone, and so is the Defender. Choose from the two-door Defender 90, the four-door Defender 110, or the larger Defender 130 with the ability to seat up to eight passengers. You'll find uncompromising performance in all three. So pack up and go even further with the Defender 110. Learn more at LandRoverUSA.com forward slash Defender. These days, we're all investors. Trying to be smart with our money despite our worst impulses. But at iShares, we believe that deep down inside of every investor is a better investor. One that's just waiting to be let out. Explore iShares ETFs and insights and let your best investor out. Visit iShares.com for more information. This isn't your average business podcast, and he's not your average host. This is The James Altucher Show. Everyone, welcome back to the Companion Podcast for The James Altucher Show. As usual... James is not going to be here because he's way too busy and way too important to be on a companion podcast, right, Nathan? <laughs> if you've been listening to the episode, you know he's probably playing chess. <laughs> oh, right. I, I can actually see if he's playing chess or not because I edit him on Lee Chess. So every time when he's not coming on the podcast, I'm like, I'm going to go to the website and see if he's playing chess or if he's like winning or losing. That's hilarious. I think he learned now that he know I'm spectating him. So I think he's playing on the new account now. So the company podcast, we do this every month. And then we usually talk about the episode during that month. We had some really interesting episodes in the last month and a half. And I have found a lot of really rewarding things from listening to them. The episode that came out after our first companion podcast was a James and Jay special, episode 691, titled You Should Run for President 2.0. At first, I was a little skeptical because I didn't really know what was going to happen. It seemed there's a little bit of cheeky stuff in there. Wait, wait. So, so just curious, like a little bit of cheeky stuff, like after you listen to the podcast or when you look at the title when I said When I you? looked at it, it seemed like I didn't know what I was getting into. I, I, it seemed like it might, it might be too far-fetched to believe. Okay. But it also, it was also pretty catchy. Oh, thank you. Leading up to the 2020 presidential election, he had a lot of flack from his neighbors, people who were talking to because he said he wasn't going to vote. And they, people were saying, well, you shouldn't have a voice. You know, you need to vote. If you're not voting, then you don't deserve to have a voice. And James correctly said, there are obvious circumstances where that's not true, such as being a social commentator, reaching out to an audience in a way where, you know, he's not pitching it to one side or just as independent saying, what if I was running for president? Then wouldn't my voice be valid whether or not I was voting for somebody? So, he did. He filed with the FEC to be a U.S. presidential candidate, and he brought back up his negative sales tax platform, and he discussed it further with Philip Stutz in episode 695, and it's actually a really solid anchor. It was kind of buried in there. Does this concept or idea ever cross your mind, like anyone can run for president in U.S.? Well, anyone who's a naturalized U.S. citizen above the age of 35. Yeah. I mean, I knew that much, but it seemed kind of a foolhardy thing because of how the two-party system is. Right. Two private organizations, their sole purpose is to stay in power. Before the podcast, like 
I didn't know there are more than thousand presidential candidates in 2020, to be honest. And I didn't even know you can run for president. Like I didn't know like you can sign up for president until James did that. Yeah, I remember he did that all on his own. Like one day we, I just got on and then he's like, Jay, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm like, uh, oh, sure. What? Am I being fired? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no. He's like, I'm actually running for president. I'm like, what? And then we actually sat down. I got on Zoom before I do another podcast. And he's like, yeah, I'm doing all this thing. And now I'm doing this, 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 this. Okay, cool. I didn't know you can do that. I thought it's only, what? Red and blue? I thought it's only red and blue and Kanye. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. James always wanted to be the translator to people, right? So like, the reason why he doesn't want to vote because, you know, he wants to stay as, as neutral as possible. Even in, I think, the episode with Phil said, Phil said he mentioned that back then, like, if you're a journalist, you can't even vote. But I'm sure, like, right now, like, even the past elections, all the journalists vote. But back to the episode, you should run for president. That, that's an interesting one because, like, James always turned anything, like, from what he learned into an experiment. So part of the reason why he wanted to run for president is because he wanted to learn the process. And it can be a good story. Just like, remember that he wrote an article of buying uh, Greenland? Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly the same experiment. So he just wanted to learn as many things as possible. So he, he remained as curious as possible. And then the episode 695 with Phil said, that's way interesting. I think that that's like the sequel to the, the episode 691. Because mm-hmm. like Phil said, actually break down like the, the political campaign and they talk about the possible platform people should run on in general. Like you said, the negative sales tax, that's actually really smart. I agree. The negative sales tax idea, James has mentioned that over the past year, made a lot of sense when he's talking about the economic straits that New York City was going through during the pandemic. It taps into the public's need for local economies to remain strong. When's the last time you go to Amazon and buy things? Yesterday. <laughs> Me too. The thing is, Amazon is so easy. You just one click and it's done. Like, how can you beat Amazon? The only thing you can do is like the… Financial incentive. Yeah, financial incentive, yeah. the negative sales tax. Which I think, I think, I think NVN should run on, to be honest. So that's a good idea. And then what Philip Stutt to added on to mm-hmm. was, instead of having this money be essentially a treasury bond, a 10-year T-bond, the idea of having a, a federal cryptocurrency. Right. I don't know if either of those two things would work, but combining the two together, you might have a chance to get one of them done. Yeah. And also, like, I always think that, like, every time you propose something new, like, idea like this, you might propose something that's very fundamental, very bare bone, right? So maybe, maybe we were like, oh, it might not work or whatever. And then when you throw it out there, people find loopholes, people find creative things to use it on. It's just like the NFTs. People are like, oh, this thing, it's, a smart contract or whatever it's they put it out there and all of a sudden thousands of thousands of people are using it in a creative way and the mm-hmm. funniest thing i don't know if you heard this the funniest thing that one audio engineer from brooklyn find nft so dumb so what happened is he was selling his fart noise oh, on nice. nft for 86 dollars I don't know if you said that. It's it's I funny. <laughs> it's funny because I I I, I, I everyone's like so you know so hype about NFT and this guy's like this thing is dumb. So what happened is during lockdown, everyone has nothing else to do, so he just recorded his fart noise, you know, for a whole year, and then he was selling it for eighty six dollars. I don't know if anyone's <laughs> buying it, but I think that's really smart. It's an interesting it's experiment. <laughs> it's a very interesting experiment. It could end up be like the Banksy of NFTs. Yeah, so like, you know, like once, you know, James proposed the, the, the negative sales tax out there and then people might pick it up and then they might turn it into something even more usable. That's right. It just seemed like, you know, how Andrew Yang got prominent on a federal scale talking about freedom dividend. His ideas did get cemented into the American brain because what happened right after he dropped out of the race, you, you had this pandemic and right. people needed money. And there's been three rounds of stimulus money, child tax credit expansion that's trying to get, you know, extended through a budgetary process. So you see that kind of idea of direct payments happening less than a year after he talked about it on a national stage when it hadn't been really discussed in a number of decades. For Andrew himself, he's now running for mayor the of mayor. New York, where right. where something like a negative sales tax or some kind of municipal stimulus for 
for people could be implemented on a scale that could be then adopted on a, on a wider scale. So it's, it's much easier to implement a sales tax when you're running a municipality that collects sales tax like New York does, as opposed right. to on a federal level. There's no currently no federal sales tax. Um, uh, but right. there is a federal sales tax, like in Europe, you know, the, you have a VAT tax. So, yeah. so what James was, was talking about could, would basically be a, a negative value-added tax that could be redeemable for a crypto 10-year T-bond. Um, and then right. reverse over here, what Andrew's talking about is, you know, he could actually have that policy implemented uh, winning mayor of New York on a local scale, which could be adopted later on a national policy. Like you saw with with the socialized medicine under Mitt Romney in Massachusetts. Oh, right. Yeah, and that's what James always talk about, right? Even in, in Choose Yourself, right? Like So, like, you don't necessarily have to have, like, big ideas, big ambitions to do big things, right? You just start small. Like, if you have an idea for an app rather than automating it, just do it manually and see how, how you get feedback. And then people give you feedback, people give you better ideas, and then you build upon it. You know, mm-hmm. speaking of pandemic, what do you think about the episode 692 with Peter Openshaw again? That's, that, I think the episode almost marked the one year of the pandemic, right? One year of mm-hmm. the pandemic and the lockdown. What do you think about the episode? It was great to hear from the man who is not afraid to say, I don't know, and let's use the best information as it arrives. After the episodes like that 692, I actually felt more comfortable. Like, like, like even though he has a lot of, oh, I, we still don't know about this. We still don't know about this. But it felt a lot more safer. You know what I mean? I felt a lot more safer and more comfortable like doing what I wanted to do. Like going out and, you know, whatever. Because like he actually he he present data in a sense that like he comparing now and then you know like mm-hmm. then we really have no idea about anything and then we just heard about people on Twitter saying this that this that right now he gave a lot more you know like even though the I don't know is on the vaccine like he mm-hmm. he didn't know what's the if the effects of the vaccine is going to be but still like you know like but at least we we know that vaccine actually helps. You know, we yes, might not know what's the effects in longer terms, but we know what's the effects in the short terms. So I think I think that episodes make me like feel like okay, we actually did something in that year's time. We weren't just sit around and not helping the society, or we just sit around and wait for the doom to happen. And then that sort of <laughs> segue into episode six ninety three, which I kind of like because like. That whole year, during the lockdown, I felt like what I did, they just sit around and look at my phone and wait for emails to come in. <laughs> I don't know if you do the same thing. That's what I did. I just look at the email like, okay, am I getting work? Am I getting a lot of work? Am I not getting work? And then when I'm working, I still have my phones on my table. And then all of a sudden, it rings. I'm like, oh, God damn it. Who, need, who wants something from me again? You know what I mean? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, because like, if you're in the office, that wouldn't happen. No, but you didn't say what number 693 was, which was a world without email with Cal Newport. Yes, thank you, Nathan. I was just so excited <laughs> about, about that. Because like that, I can relate to that episode very, very much. It's because I literally was, at, let's say I'm editing uh, an episode on a podcast, and all of a sudden I got an email from someone saying, hey, can you check this, 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 this? All of a sudden… You know, you, you sort of your flow just got broken, you yes. know, and you're like you have to worry about that, and then you're like, I really want to finish this. I don't know if I should reply. You know, all of a sudden, half an hour gone by, just deciding between continue to work or, or reply that email. I think was it Stephen Cutler that say that you know, once your flow get cut off, it takes another twenty minutes to get back your flow. Was it Stephen Cutler? That's right, because he's the flow guy. That episode impacted me immediately because I was noticing how much I would get knocked out of my flow. I deal with a lot of email day in and day out. I checked in with the team I work with at HarperCollins later that day, thinking about the amount of emails that we receive. Currently, I have a small group on my post-production team, and we we get CC'd on a lot of emails to kind of be able to have each other's backs when we're right. to make sure nothing falls through the cracks when you have a small team handling a large amount. But I often just check email because uh, I'll look in my inbox and there'll be 20 emails and only two of them will be addressed to me. 18 of them are just kind of peripheral and I don't ever need to see. 
And it was just like, wow, there is really a lot of distraction coming in that that pulls me out of my process when you're trying to actually work on something as opposed to just manage things. Yeah, even that that 18 emails that doesn't really address you, you sort of you sort of feel bad because like let's say if if the email is about someone's project, you know, getting ruined and you're like, "Oh, god damn it. Why is why are this guys doing it?" And you're sort of got that negative feeling and then you're just like, "No, nah, I can't get back to the flow anymore." I started out blocking more time and just turning off Outlook and focusing saying, "I'm going to do this this block of time. Here's the most important things." You know, you're talking about eating the frog, just taking care of the worst things first and blocking out the time so it's done with it. And then just having a segmented scheduled day where you're dedicating times to things. You can dedicate time later in the day or or during a time to check email and make sure that nothing crazy has happened. You know, you can have a check email time. A lot of us live in this rapid response world where our emotion, our anxiety is telling us that we have to respond um, we have to find an answer to the thing that just hit our inbox, the thing that's at the top of the inbox. And that's n- it's not really true in uh, in most of the cases. It's just taking us away from achieving the task that we were already working on. Yeah. So which do you find better? Do you find do you do you have like two inbox checking calendar slot or do you only have one each day? What I'm currently doing is structuring some blocks of time to work on specific projects I need to get done. And I do right. that a lot in order of what I need to focus on the most or what I want to get off my mind. And then yeah. I'll block off some unstructured time where it's just nobody put a meeting on my calendar. And that time is my figure out what I need to do with that block of time time. And yeah. hopefully it can get more structured as I'm able to implement a flow. But things change from week to week, so... It's good to have that malleability. Yeah, especially in our line of work, right? Like we you never know like when the project is going to come in and we never know what's when's the deadline. You That's know, right. sometimes we're just afraid of, you know, like missing deadline, but I felt like, you know, like uh, that, that that I felt like that's just bad for 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 mentally health anyway. Indeed. Yeah, it's funny because like the episodes uh I got like personal feedback from a friend of mine. I think he's a friend of yours too. Uh David Weiss from Sonic Scoop. Yeah, of course I know David. Yeah, so David texted me like, say, hey, Jay, you know, how are you, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, I want to tell you how terrific the episode was. And then he said that, yeah, the big aha moment for him is he had to turn all the notifications off on his phone, except text messages, to avoid the context switching. Uh, shout out to David. Uh, he's a great yeah. person. All his years at Mix Magazine before he started up Sonic Scoop. Yeah, so like I felt like that the episode is great because it's a it's episodes about actions. I would call it the actionable episodes. Like you listen to it and you can take action right away and be like, yes, I can do this and change my life, you know? Because I'm gonna try to weave into another episode. <laughs> because the episodes, like if you get so much text, you will get burned out very quickly. Which mm-hmm. lead me to episode 701. Uh, with um, Nat- Natalie Rachel. She is the behavioral economist. Uh, that I-, I can relate to the episodes very, very well because I could be wrong, but I think I'm experiencing some sort of burnout as well. Not so much of like, hey, you know, I have a lot of work. I'm too busy and I get burnout. It's more of like, okay, I'm all alone here and working for James. And then sometimes you know, James got too busy. Sometimes he didn't get back in time for me. I'm like, ah, crap. Now I just have to wait. You know, of course, I'm doing something else when I wait, but like sometimes when something it's on a deadline, I'm like, ah, crap. It's the anxiety just eats me away. I was really interested to hear the clinical definition of burnout and have this differentiation between just being worn out and seeing key markers like pulling away from like your family, pulling away from work, the depression and the fatigue, and also just getting worse, a sloppier at your job, not being able to get it done. Have you experienced any of this? So all oh, three wow. of them. Really? Yeah. During the lockdown or? Yeah. I mean, yes, certainly. Um, hmm. You know, it probably happened around the same time that it happened to James. We were, you know, doing five episodes a week and uh, adding on a bunch of other stuff. When you're freaked out about whether money is going to continue to come in, you're just like, I'm going to take everything I can possibly do. Yeah. And then the, like the overcommitment. I've fallen prey to overcommitment before, and 
that mixed with like seasonal depression that there were, you know, the winter, the short hours yeah, and winter. Yeah. I started thinking about my personal well-being a lot after that. Uh, you know, I, I had listened to the Stephen Gundry episode a few episodes before. Started taking a thousand milligrams of time-release vitamin C and and a thousand uh, ten thousand cc's of uh, vitamin D. And yeah, I'm glad that you're feeling better. How are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, like what? I'm. I'm. In, I, I think I'm still at the burnout uh, phase because you know mainly because we're still pretty much locked down. It's not like ah yeah I can go out blah 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 and then I have like friends over blah blah blah. I just don't know what the future holds in terms of like not future as in like my career future. It's more like my well being future. You know yeah. how like how I will be like in five years from of the, uh, not even five years maybe like two months from now. Like how will I be? Will I be, still be the same person or will I be more depressed or will I be more happy? Yeah. Anxiety and, ruled. Yeah, and anxiety like the anxiety just creep up. And I think yes. a lot of people out there they experience this, you know, during the lockdown. And listen to the episodes really hit the home run for me too, because like when Natalie mm-hmm. talk about her own stories, that's terrifying. Like imagine when you woke up blind. Jesus Christ, that's just stress for you. So like that, that sort of just like say that like how important taking a break is, you know, for for any of us. Like not just. Sitting at home, taking a break, as in like you take a you take a break and you go out to different locations and do different things, you know. I think that like like Jay like James said in the in the episodes, like that's also part of the reason why he just started playing chess so much. I realized I did the same thing too. Like so, I just started playing some games every night, two hours that game, you know, just to just to get myself out of that burnout situation, so like distract myself from doing work. Yeah, that episode really hit the room home run for me, and I felt like the episode is gonna hit a room home run for almost everyone out there. Oh my gosh, I love these clothes, Mizzen and Maine. That's M I Z Z E N and Maine. It really is the most comfortable work clothes, travel clothes. I'm trying. I had to travel this whole week. I'm traveling for a week and a half, and I just took Mizzen and Main clothes with me. Close out 2023 in style with comfortable, breathable, packable, and machine washable pieces from Mizzen and Main. As you wrap up your year end goals, enjoy a Mizzen and Main dress shirt that you can wear confidently. I like that they've got very, very just nice, solid colors. I don't really like to get all fancy in patterns and everything, although they do have some pattern shirts, but very comfortable clothes, stretchable pants. It's just super comfortable, but they look professional and they, you can wear them casually or professionally. I like some of their flannel shirts are untuck shirts. I love untuck. I never tuck in. So again, uh, whether you're shopping for a special someone or giving yourself the gift you really want, I just buy myself gifts. Mizzen and Maine is the perfect gift for any guy who works, travels, and or cares about looking and feeling great. As you could tell by my many photos across the internet, I care about looking fantastic. I'm practically a model. And let's be honest, every guy loves to look great. So again, shop now at MizzenandMaine.com and save 20% when you spend $130 or more using promo code James. That's promo code James at Mizzen and Main, M-I-Z-Z-E-N and Main.com. You know what I love about fantasy sports is that even though I'm not going to be a great basketball player or a baseball player or a football player or whatever, I feel like I get to participate and make decisions and use my knowledge of these different leagues to, or these different sports to, to compete. So it's like I can pick my team or I can pick my favorite players and I could use my knowledge to make predictions and maybe even make money. So with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league on prize picks. This is a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill 
and comedian Andrew Schultz, who's also been a guest on this podcast and I've been a guest on his. You can now find Community Plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Look, Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. What? So I love playing it. I love anywhere where I can use analytical ability with my interests to demonstrate some skill and maybe make some money. And I like the game like aspect. I do wish they had chess as a category on prizepicks.com, but I'll set up for what they've got. Maybe I should make my own fantasy chess league. But in any case, I love prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash James. Use code James for a first deposit match up to $100. That's the easiest $100 you're ever going to make. So that's prizepicks.com slash James and use code James. Daily fantasy sports made easy. The future of learning is definitely online. Like it's such BS that you have to spend $200,000 or take $200,000 in loans and go to some fancy school when it's useless. It doesn't guarantee you a job. Most employers, including me, do not care about degrees or grades or anything like that. We want to care that you love what you're doing, that you know what you're doing, in some cases that you have experience or that you're willing to learn. But People in general love learning and are curious, like the key to success is curiosity. And I think masterclass.com is the perfect model for online learning. I'm really happy they're they're sponsoring uh, this episode. If you're going to give a gift, give the gift of learning. Masterclass makes a meaningful gift this season for you and anyone on your list because both of you can learn from the best to become your best, from leadership to effective communication to cooking. Let me tell you some of the classes I've taken. I've taken comedy from Steve Martin. I mean, can you believe I can take a class from Steve Martin on comedy or Judd Apatow, my favorite comedy director. I could take an actual class from him on writing. Wolfgang Puck on cooking. Dan Brown on writing. Or Judy Bloom, who's been on this podcast, on writing. By the way, Wolfgang Puck also has been on this podcast. It's such a pleasure. I I try to take classes all the time from masterclass.com. And whether you're watching Masterclass on TV or listening in audio mode in the app or on their site, the quality speaks for itself. It's like these Masterclass instructors are your own personal mentors that are going to help you reach the next level. How much would it cost to take one-on-one classes on comedy from Steve Martin or on chess from Gary Kasparov? You just wouldn't be able to do it. But it would, I mean, it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. With a Masterclass annual membership, it's $10 a month. Memberships start at $120 a year for unlimited access to one-on-one classes with all 180-plus masterclass instructors. So it's not just $120 for one instructor. You get all 180-plus masterclass instructors. Boost your confidence and find practical takeaways you can apply to your life and at work. And if you own a business or are a team leader, use Masterclass to empower and create future-ready employees and leaders. That's the real education in today's world. So... This holiday season, you can give one annual membership and get one free at masterclass.com slash JAS. JAS, of course, stands for the James Altucher Show. So right now you can get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash JAS. Masterclass.com slash JAS. Offer terms apply. I always think about this. I always think everyone is destined to have a role. Maybe you were destined to be a CEO or maybe a C-suite person or maybe you're destined to be a worker to support other people or maybe you're destined to be a person to help other people to achieve great things. (laughs) Because I really want to talk about episode 699, how to be the CEO with Jeff Immel. I think that that the episode is great. He just talked about like his story of being a CEO or how to be a CEO. And Jeff Immel is such a great person. Like the first time I met him, it's the first time, you know, for the episodes, he came mm-hmm. on and I felt like he's my friend now. I felt like I can text him like, hey, dude, you want to get 
Chick Fil A tomorrow or something. It's so good at connecting with people. Yeah, a lot of the best leaders are the best communicators and just have that magnetism. One of the lessons that I take away from the episode: no matter what decision you make, you wouldn't know it's the best one until you make it. Because sometimes I would like spend an hour or two hours just trying to like make a decisions on like anything, like because James keep asking like, if that time you did this, what would happen? Why did you do this? Or why? Why do you not do that? Or why you do that? And then he did say that you know James at the time we didn't really know what's going to happen, so we just have to make those decisions then and hope mm-hmm. for the best. Resonate with me because like I always very indecisive. It was interesting to hear a leader's role being in charge of a conglomerate that is so disparate in its financial streams, having NBC and then adding on Universal to that and creating NBC Universal, and they sold both of those away to Comcast. He talked about their divestiture of, of their financial services company, G Financial, went over to like uh, Synchrony Bank, I believe, after that. Or like at the same time, they were, you know, manufacturing like 90% of the world's jet engines. It just didn't make sense at some points. These decisions impact thousands of workers' lives. Imagine you have thousands of lives on your fingertip, man. I can't be conscious of making any decisions like right there. Like, I can task myself to make decisions for like thousands or possible tens of thousands of lives, you know? Yeah. It's a difficult position to think about from the first time you begin managing people. Yeah. I can't even make decisions for like three people. <laughs> it's very difficult. At some point, like I'm like the, the, the point of contact for like, you know, for, for you, Pam and Steve. And then, you know, before the lockdown, I'm like, uh, I can't make decisions for you guys. <laughs> I, I will be the worst CEO ever. But I do like one thing that Jeff uh, Imel says, you know, you shouldn't need to ask other people for favor if you, when you reach out to them. Like you should be able to reach out to other people. You should reach out to other people. Even just have nothing, like you even just wasn't asking for anything. Like let's say, I know you like NFT. If, I, if you like NFT, I'll be like sending you, you know, links to this to, mm-hmm. to keep our relationship going. Not just like, hey, Nathan, how are you? Actually, I need this from you. You know what I mean? Right. Scheduling time. You know, on Sundays, I'm going to email two people just saying hi, just saying, hey, I thought you'd be interested in this, not asking for anything. Because we all think, oh, that's a great idea. And then we don't do it. Setting aside time to keep up your relationships seems like the cheapest thing you can do to create, you know, a really good vibe for yourself and for somebody else. No, yeah, I felt like the episodes came out a year too late for me. <laughs> so I'm an introvert. During the lockdown, I became even more introvert. Like, I felt like I haven't talked to any of my friends for a year. Like, because I'm those type of person, if you don't reach out to me, I don't reach out to you. You know, okay. I like to just be in my zone, reading, looking at memes, you know, playing games and working. I just was, wasn't the type of person like, Oh, maybe I should reach out to Nathan and see how he is. You feel embarrassed, you know? Like, what if they are busy? What if they don't see you as friend anymore? What if they see you being too needy? Do you think you'd actually get received that way? I don't think I. I don't think it, it's get received that way. I think it's all in our head. What if I tomorrow I just text you hi and nothing else, just hi? Let's find out. <laughs> okay, let's find out tomorrow. But yeah, so like that, that that's why I like the episode so much. And, uh, you know, like just because I always want to find out if I'm the C type person, but I just realized I might not ever be the C type person. I just feel bad for making decisions to anyone, for anyone, you know? Then you can just be you. I'm trying to be the J type person. Anything else that I, I feel to cover? Anything else you think it's great for you? Like, I mean, I'm just. You know, like I'm just talking about those episodes that really vibe with, with me. I was really interested by the retail investing masterclass that oh, James yeah. had with Robin, where James talked about his experience being a day trader and being a hedge fund manager and being now an investor, comparing Robin's experience, who Robin's been a, a, a very successful retail uh, investor, and hearing her picks and why they do things differently, um, why they invest in different companies and why their decisions make sense for each of them. I was very intrigued to learn about SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies, and how how those are blank check companies used to make a private company public, um, and how that's been 
I think it happened a few hundred times in the last year, something like that. So, yeah. so learning about that, learning about REITs, real, real estate um, investment trusts, and then and then thinking about how that goes to new markets. So we're talking about um, Meet Tech, MITC, um, with oh, the Israeli yeah. 3D printing company that's that's uh, printing uh, their printed steak or sell the technology so you could print actual animal protein that is not in ground beef format. Um, and also talking about REITs in, in, in terms of, you know, as of, I think, yesterday, so we're recording this on the 26th, on the 25th, the news came out that um, that the New York legislature and, and Governor Cuomo had reached a deal on on the legalization of marijuana in New York State, and the yep. same thing is passing through in, in New Jersey. So how these new markets, so like how there are, there are companies that are cannabis specific REITs that are investing in these things and, and just I'm um, like I'm um, so now I'm starting to watch the trends and see how see how the news is impacting these different types of companies. Do you do you buy any after the episodes? I put in a little bit of play money just so I can keep interest in it. You know, I'll mm-hmm. I'll buy just a few shares skin so I can in the game. Just yeah, minimal skin in the game so I can just um you know, like you go to a casino and you just say, uh, "Here's how much money I have to to play with," and 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 then I'm out. That's what I'm doing right. with retail investing, um, just yeah. so I can learn more about it without having to worry about it impacting my financial outcome at this point. Yeah, never put more than one percent of your portfolio. That's what James always says. Never put more than one percent. Took that advice. Yeah, I me too. But the thing is, like the other advice that I took, it's also like invest in something you really believe in, and mm-hmm. you know and. And you really know it. So like, I haven't bought into any of this of those stocks. The only stocks that I'll share that I buy and it's like gaming stocks or or mm-hmm. crypto, like or, or something that I really know the industry well because I yeah, don't have. I time invest to in the s- publishing industry that I know and the new the news and oh. publishing industry, digital. That's which is what I know well. Yeah, it's so weird because like I know like both of our like out there people are talking about oh the weed oh the specs or the you know the beyond meat or whatever or the ev as robin sure. put it the ev electric vehicles yeah so for me i'm just like i know gaming way better i know gaming's hardware way better so i'm just going to buy this company put all your money in steam steam <laughs> oh no no steam is not a public company i i try to look for it and i love discord and discord is not a public Company either. Well, Discord is as as today's recording on 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 March twenty sixth is that Microsoft is going to buy Discord for a yeah. very 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 large sum. Yeah, ten billion dollars. Yeah, like I always love Discord more than Slack, may, mainly because I'm a gamer, and I felt like so maybe Discord, you should be investing in Microsoft right now before before that deal goes through. The episodes, the retail investing masterclass episodes, actually great. You know, so I learned so much from the episodes too. I totally forgot. Uh, and then you know, I I look into all this stuff. I even like proposed to Robin, like, hey, you should have a newsletter. Don't say anything. The newsletter just literally, what stocks are you looking at, and then mm-hmm. say why in two sentences, and that's it. Because you don't have to spend yeah. too much time on the newsletter. And I was subscribed to it, and then I'm sure she's gonna get like. Tens of th- tens of thousands of subscribers. To be honest, wow, yeah, yeah, I believe it. Do you have anything else? It's all the time I've got before my next recording. All right, even even Nathan is too busy for me. That's see, that's well, why I'm burning out because you are too busy for me, Nathan. <laughs> it's great to see you on uh, every month. It's like that one day every month where we get to look at each other's faces, but the audience doesn't. Thank you, Nathan. Later, buddy. In Tresto, Sucubitril Volsartan Tablets is the number one heart failure brand prescribed by cardiologists and has helped over 1 million people with heart failure. It's a prescription medicine that treats adults with long-lasting chronic heart failure and works better when the heart cannot pump a normal amount of blood to the body. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or Alice Kieran. Or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. Don't take with Alice Kieran or within 36 hours of taking an ACE inhibitor. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Angioedema is swelling of your face, lips, tongue, and throat that may cause death. If it causes difficulty breathing, get emergency help. Ask your doctor about Entresto. 
To learn more, visit support.entresto.com or call 833-446-6699. For pricing, visit entresto.com backslash cost. If you can't afford your medication, Novartis may be able to help. 